Hello sports fans, uh, perusers of the internet, random scrollers, I'm comedian and amateur back garden cricket player Nick Rabinovitz and welcome to the reverse sweep of sports chat shows, Benta with the boys. Uh, it's episode one, on each episode of the show we dive into the sporting world with the finesse of a streaker dodging security shamelessly and with minimal coverage. We review the big sporting stories of the week and we conduct a no holds barred interview with a sporting great. Speaking of greatness, let's take a look at some of the great sporting highlights of the week. We'll start with the Betway SA20 cricket tournament, it's in full swing. It's Paul Royals out there dominating the league. Paul Limitarians or whatever you call people from Paul haven't been prouder since Peter de Villiers won Movember. The Betway Catch 2 million competition has proved that fielding isn't as easy as the pros make it look. South African spectators must be very healthy. Most of them look like they couldn't even catch COVID, let alone a ball. In other news, our new UFC middleweight champion of the world, South African Drikas Duplessis. Drikas is now the second most famous person from Welcome after Mark Shuttleworth. Sorry, Dean Algar. To win the country's heart, Drikas, unlike Shuttleworth, who had to go to space, Drikas just had to go to Canada to PK an American in the face. A lot. Yo, but Drikas is in shape, guys. Those abs have more ups and downs than Quacha Smith's nose. I don't know what his diet plan is, Ma. One thing's for sure. Hey, yet nie, wat ons yet nie. My co-hosts are two South African sporting legends who need no introduction, but I'm going to give them one anyway because it says here in the script I have to. South African cricket's very own $6 million man, if you adjust for inflation. <laughs> a man whose full name sounds like a 19th century gold prospector, which he kind of is, Christopher Henry Morris. <laughs> and to my right, <laughs> one of the country's greatest ever centers. It's not the Mall of Africa. It's Jean de Villiers. Thank you, Nick. Woo! Welcome, gentlemen. That was a hell of an intro. Yep. That, <laughs> I've never been compared to the Mall of Africa. It's big. Massive. It is big, yeah. And it's impressive. Thank you. That's why. Oh, you're still talking about the Mall of Africa. <laughs> but how's, I, I didn't make six million in my career. I was actually 6.2, but it's fine. We won't make a scene about it. Um, I probably made 0.2. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Are we talking dollars? Or well, how, many World Cups no, did, how many World Cups did you win, John? You can ask me that question. It's yeah. fine. But it's fine. Yeah, you, you, you deserve more. Um, I'm fine, Nick. Thank you. I'm fine. That's good to hear. I'm good. I'm a little bit Even if you are pretending to be fine. I'm a little bit okay. dusty. That's, we can see that. The, the king got hold of me last night. King Callis, he got hold of me. So, on an early flight from PE. So, very happy to be with you, gentlemen, and talk a bit of rubbish. And so, it makes some sense. Did both of you uh, wake up to watch Drikus's epic victory on Sunday? Indeed, we did. And now we know. What exactly? Now everyone knows. What exactly do we know? Do, are you telling me that you do not know? I don't. No, everyone knows. Do they? Everyone yeah. knows it. Everyone yeah, knows yeah. it. Yeah. No. But Viet, <laughs> no Vietnam. No Vietnam. No Vietnam. No Vietnam. No Vietnam. Yeah. Everybody I did knows. get up. It was unbelievable. How was unbelievable. it for the mood of the, the country? I think it was awesome. Um, I think it's... Uh, a lot of guys don't really watch UFC. I think there are a lot of UFC fans that have started to start watching now, new UFC fans. Um, and even by the end of it, I mean, they look like you, uh, you know, when you get it, like as nice Woolies bananas or nice bananas from anywhere. And after a couple of days, they've got those like a bruises on them. That's what Drickers looked like at the end. It was a brawl. That's exactly what it was. It was a brawl. He got Murti, Murti him back. He took him down. I honestly thought at one stage he's not going to make it. But that, Yes, as we call them, the Dutchies came out of him. The Buddha boy, the farm strong came out and he, it's an unbelievable fight. And the country is loving him, loving him. I mean, he had a few, few choice words for our government, otherwise, but uh, it was a hell of an achievement for a South African, I can remember wherever he's from there in the farmlands to come and take the world down. It's, it's just, it's a tenacity, eh? It's incredible. I, I mean, I must say, I've never, I've never seen kind of, you experience it with the World Cup and with the, with the Rugby World Cup, I think last year we experienced it again where, where it really does unite the country and everybody is kind of, you know, jumps on the bandwagon and starts supporting, even if you're not a rugby supporter. But with Drickers, uh, you know, a one-man sport, mm. it's kind of, it was everywhere. Everyone was talking about it, you know. Even if you if you don't like fighting at all or anything like that, whether it's a mom or, or, or anything like that, they were, they were supporting him. They were like, yes, go Drickers, mm. we're behind you. Um, 
you know, we we want you to be successful because at the end of the day, he's part of us. Yeah. He's South African. You know, and we as South Africans, with all the issues that we have, we flip and tenacious. And and I think he, he embodies that. He 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 like he's the guy that shows what we can do. And and that is probably what the world are now. Yeah. And I and I, I mean I I think you hit the nail on the head. Is a guy that's not in a team. You know, where if, there's a few guys you can rely on when you're playing a, a team sport. He's on his ace in there. Yeah. He walks into a ring, he knows, or whatever they call it, the cage, and a guy that wants to knock him out or choke him out, and he walks in there willingly and does it. Octagon. And he, the octagon. And he does it willingly, and he says, I'm going to do it for South Africa, and that inspires people, and that's what we do as South Africans. We inspire people, and no Vietale that you don't f*** with a boer or the boer. If we made the uh, Hollywood uh, Oscar-winning documentary, would we call it My Octagon Teacher? <laughs> but, Drikus? Because he's really not popularized the sport in South Africa. Sure. He has. And yeah. I didn't know anything about MMA before this mm. fight. I thought it was something you took at a party that made you hug people. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, they don't hug that much, eh? They kiss a lot, though. He kissed his entire <laughs> family uh, and sport it's and beautiful. coaching staff on the mouth. It's that, beautiful that, because they, it's love. It's love. And that's what Afrikaans people do to show their they, love. They love, they kiss. And sumaka opti lipis. And as I mentioned uh, before, they don't care who it is. It's, it's if I say ma, say pa, omis, omis, opa, oma, biermanner, biervrouwens, duominis, hoinkies, kijkies, afrachtigs. You guys, you know, it, I think actually, Afrachtigs. You even have a brain there. I think actually the conclusion I've reached is that Afrikaans people are the original super spreaders. That's a hell of a point. Very possible. I love a point. Very possible. Did you kiss John Smith when you won the World Cup? Of course I did. Good. Of the lippies. <laughs> of the lippies, yes. <laughs> I mean, don't you just want to kiss that man when you see him? Oh, he's <laughs> like a big teddy bear. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Chris, you mentioned actually that you used to be Dricus's, uh fighting weight. Mm. Run us through what's happened. And then you um, ate him. Then I you was, ate him. No, I was in his fighting, fighting weight. And then a wonderful day came where I announced my retirement. And now I'm slightly heavier in the heavyweight division john bones jones we can throw it down if you want tyson fury possibly um, that's listen he's a superstar and he's got a wonderful belly on him good gut world champion i'm not going to go that route i've actually lost weight believe it or not guys applause but well, um yes yeah but you seem I'm trying to put it i'm trying to with, put it back uh, yeah. with your body so i think that mm. may not be the last of the body shaming jokes that we send his way. No. Uh, dig into dig into those chips. The How good are those chips, though? Even the furries. Even Listen. the dogs are barking at you. <laughs> furries. <laughs> they outdo themselves every time when we've got chips. Here. Some have got two. I know we've got a guest coming, I mean, but this is these are mine. Yeah. They're not for him. Will the guest be able to reach? That's a very <laughs> high table. I don't know yeah. if he can get up no, there. He, he will yeah. not. Guys, you've played with. Who do you think? Either of the current Springbok team or past Springboks. Who who would? Stand the best chance against uh, Drikas in the ring. Okay, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna ask you the same question. So on three, say who you think. Do you have a name? Yes. Okay, on three you say who. One, two, three. Buck yeah, is Puerta. Ooh. Ooh. It's locks. That, both locks. I want them to fight each other. No. <laughs> they, no. They, they had a little bit of a chat on Twitter. At yeah, they did, eh? That would have been a great fight in their high, high day. No, I, I never Etzibet. ever want to see the, the, that fight. I mean, they, both are, are, are mates of mine. And what would Vic be doing? Vic, Vic would be in no. the background. <laughs> Vic would be the guy that walks <laughs> after round one. <laughs> the yeah. guy walking. And he would wear, he would wear one, bikini. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Think of the hair. <laughs> that would be a hell of a fight. Yeah. No, I think Bucky, uh, I mean, even, look, both of them. Yeah. But, they, you know, they've got that, that dog in them. Oh. They just, they just don't give up. And they both uh, look for it, eh? They look for a fight. They love it. They look for it. That's they what love it. Me. Yeah. I go to a Joel Oaks, look for a fight in me, and I go, Oaks, listen, don't do this. Yeah. I'll beat every single one of you by at least 100 meters. Like, let's not have a go here. Yeah. But they go look for it. They those Oaks who come in and want to say, how's it? What'd you say? And don't, I mean, Donnie Rousseau. Oof. Don't, don't discount that guy either. D did you ever land up in a fight? <laughs> you have, surely. <laughs> you yes. got carried away. What happened? You know what happened? And it's a story that we've actually kept quiet for a very long time. And then John Smith decided, no, no the time is right now to tell the story. <laughs> <clears throat> so after 07, when we won the World Cup, 
so you have this party tour as well, go around the country, and, and it really is amazing. So this is now the last night out. We, you know, as you do, you have a, a proper party, still celebrating. Um, and there are two buses coming back because we were all staying at the Cullinan Hotel here in Cape Town. And, um, and there was one bus that kind of went back at 12 o'clock, and then there was like a, a later bus. The De Villiers bus. <laughs> The later bus, let's call it that. <laughs> so now we're on the later bus and it's, you know, it's, it's going. The guys have had lots of wine, lots of beer. But like I said, we had, we had our partners there as well. So my girlfriend at the time, now wife. So we're having a bit of an argument, as you do that time of the morning, because she needs to work the following day. Yeah, we didn't decide to go on the earlier bus, etc., etc. So now it's a bit uncomfortable. And John Smith's deci Smith decides it's a good idea while we're sitting on the bus now the music is pumping to just take his bottle of wine and just oh. you know it on our heads and he does it the first i'm like yeah smitty that's not lacquer please don't do that again five minutes later same thing does it again that's a massive laugh and um and like the third time came again and i just couldn't take it got up hoy john smith a lacquer in the face <laughs> yes <laughs> on the eye he goes back Four rows. You see? <laughs> Seriously, only punch I've ever thrown in my life. Music off, body over, everybody's dead quiet. Flipper. I, I missed the last um, visit to, to, to Newlands here in Cape Town, um, you know, with a, with a trophy the following day, because I'm like all depressed and whatever. Um, but I mean, yeah, that was my... And how did John take the hit? Apart no, well, obviously well. You know, cause, so he wakes up the following morning. He's like... <clears throat> gets to breakfast, he's like, jeepers, guys, I've, I've got this, what what happened last night? <laughs> he, didn't, he couldn't remember. And uh, yeah, so it was me. It's time for our special guest, guys. Are you ready for him? Yes. Uh, he is uh, going to be our first guest on the Long Tail interview. Uh, and just before he joins us, we're actually going to catch up on some of the craziness which has been going on in the stands uh, over the last couple of days at the SA20. Welcome to our first installment of Fans in the Stands. Okay guys, so we're here with the fans on the grass embankment at Newlands. And I'm going to ask these boys, what is your plan if the ball comes this way for the 2 million rand Betway catch? Okay, but who's, who's, who's protecting, who's catching, what's the plan? Okay, go, you tell me. I'm catching. Catch Why are you saying you're catching? I back myself. <laughs> you back yourself. Do your friends back you? Do you back him? No, no. no. <laughs> It's every man for himself. So basically, if they catch it, they're not sharing. It's an every man for themselves. No game plan on this side. If you were going to bet today, or if you've had a bet, who are you betting on? Leading run scorer. Yes. No, jeez. I mean, Rickleton's up there, isn't he? What about Van der Dissen? Van der Dissen's not far behind either. But uh, my money's still on Durban. Durban boy, through and through. Guys, if you guys were betting today, by any chance, who would you put your money on today? We have to put it on Mumbai yep. Uh, Cape Town. Cape Town Mumbai for the Cape win. Oh, yeah. Mumbai is a tough one because they're not playing tonight, but my Cape Town are playing. So, uh, yeah. who's the best cricketer you've ever seen in your life? The best looking cricketer? Oh. Morning. Oh, I'll say Morning Merkel. Morning Merkel, yes. Oh, morning. Yes, yes. Morning Merkel, absolutely. Welcome back, everybody. What, what an honor it is now to be joined by a pro tier cricketing legend. Sure. Uh, a man who's actually only one of two players in the history of the game to have carried his bat three times. Yo! Unbelievable. And, I mean, just for this guy to be able to carry a modern bat is a feat in <laughs> itself. Uh, he's also one half of what the script calls the least aesthetically pleasing opening partnership of all time with Graham Smith. I don't know if that's a reference to their batting style or robust looks uh, but it is the gritty gutsy scrappy never say die tiny pocket rocket <laughs> of a south african opener dean elgar Yay! <laughs> welcome dino hello nick how are you good and you 
Fantastic. Oh, that's a hell of an intro again, eh? Uh, you, again. You're basically falling your wind out here with you know, the intros today. It's wonderful to see you. I haven't seen you since, uh, I think it was the, it was a golf tournament. It was, yeah. Yes. In Durban, yes. where ago. according to Christopher Henry Morris, mm, mm. because and I arrived late in <laughs> the and evening, Zimbali. and yeah. you, you actually had got drunk for the third time <laughs> that night. <laughs> for that day. For that day. Just I mean, the night. Well, I think the night was maybe the second time for the night. Um, Can you I remember mean, that Nick was there? I, I do, yes, I do remember. Do you? He was talking on stage. An like, intimate moment <laughs> <kinda> afterwards <laughs> in the bar. Kind of like, like what he's doing now. Eh? You just embraced talk, each other. Just talking <laughs> but, um, but I mean, that's what one has you to said do. Some, those, some beautiful things to me in the bar afterwards. Is it? Yeah. Uh, kiss I your couldn't hear what they were, but... <laughs> <laughs> Did I kiss your forehead? Uh, you might have. You I mean, might have kissed me on the... It's good aiming space there, so... Just thank you. <laughs> you had to jump though. <laughs> you had to jump, uh, Dino, how are you enjoying your retirement? You've recently retired from international. Test yeah, sport. yeah. So far, it's been been quite nice. Um, now that I sit here, I should have done it ages ago, really. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not totally retired from playing the game. Just retired from uh, um, international ball. <coughs> and um, yeah, I've still got a, a lot of a lot of good years left in me, and it's going to be. Unfortunately, not in South African shores. It's going to be uh, God Save Our King. So, um, well, fortunately yeah. for your bank account. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. Horrible. What? I'm just chasing Mori at the moment, but I don't think I'm going to get there. Yeah, good luck. Maybe enough runs, as you said. <laughs> Maybe enough runs. How did it feel like that last knock? You know, it's the last innings of your career. How does it feel getting a standing ovation after scoring 12? <laughs> it's maybe the best 12 I've ever made. <laughs> 12 is a great number. It is. It is actually. Yeah. So they say, eh, John? So they say. Yeah, it was always my number on the cricket field. It was yeah. number 12. Yeah, I, I guess that's hindsight, eh? So everyone says, yeah, you quit when you're on top. But uh, yeah, I made a commitment to the side that I was always going to play the whole series out. <coughs> it's amazing when you get access captain and they actually want you to come and fill in and do the job again. So it was quite cool to do that as well. <laughs> But again, uh, Newlands, you don't get uh, bigger and better against opposition. That's really tough. Possibly the best side in the world. Um, so yeah, that's the sentimental out the way. Um, yeah, so just looking forward to the next few years that lie ahead. I've got a, I've got a question. Like the, the decision to to quit international cricket. Okay. So you, you're saying you're still going to play. You're going to play at Essex. So y you still enjoy playing the game. Yeah. Right. So the decision to, to quit that, is that is that just because of um, kind of all the other that's going on at, at that level? Or, or how do you make that decision? Because if you still love playing the game, then then surely you want to, well, I suppose there's two things to it. Either you, you want to provide for, for a family eventually and, and whatever, financially, or it's because you love the game, you want to play the game and you want to be competing at the highest level, yeah. which is international level. I think the last few years, looking back, we haven't played enough test cricket. And um, if I'm honest with you guys, I would have loved to, to, to play 100 test matches for your, for your country. But um, I mean, the last few years, we haven't played enough. And I'm very much aware of time sticking on. I'm 36 now. But I reckon if I was going to stick it out to, an, to 100 tests, I'll be 55. <laughs> um, so for me, it's just about time that's getting wasted at the moment. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of other external things that I, I can get into, but I'm really got to choose my words. Um, it's been a really tough, maybe two, three years of playing for the national side. It was, it was quite hectic dealing with a lot of off-field things, which I felt has taken a lot of time away from my, myself and, and my family. And when you play test series, you want to play against the best in the world. You want to play four tests a series, not two. Um, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a little bit bittersweet. Um, so yeah, those are my reasons. Um, so yeah, for now, looking forward to my my next three years with Essex, and I'm I'm pretty sure they're going to get a, a a pretty good team man and a and a and a pretty good cricketer as well within their change room. Why? Yeah. Who, who else did they contract? Simon Homer's there. <laughs> yeah, he's there. Simon Homer's there. Just South Africans. <laughs> I was, I was, did you ever at any stage did it ever become a lust to play for the country? I definitely think there were times where it did become like a lot of hard work and you lose your enjoyment. I mean, playing for your, your mm. country is the greatest honor. It's but, everything, yeah. but when you're dealing with, so I had to deal with a lot of stuff off the field, especially with the captaincy role, where the coach that was going through a lot of scrutiny in South Africa, if not the world, 
you like you put you take all of that on board and you kind of like lose your whole focus and your focus is actually to go out and play and score runs and win games that's 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 your focus mm. so i think mine shifted a lot and that's myself to blame because maybe i was in a foreign um, a foreign situation at the time and um i feel i needed to deal with a lot of things because of what we were going through new board coaches getting scrutinized for things um and yeah, I, I think it's just me because I want to make the team better and the environment better. Yeah, and it's like, obviously I, would, I was in the same position as, as captain of the box as well. And <clears throat> I just feel once it become, once the focus is not rugby, or in your case, cricket, once the focus becomes something else, that, that's when you lose it. Yeah. That's where yeah. it doesn't become enjoyable anymore because you only get there because of who, you, you know, the, the, the cricket that you're playing because you're a hell of a good cricketer. Um, <laughs> You know, and and then then that just it messes with your mind as well because yeah. you can't have your focus on the things that need to be focused on, and um, and, and the one thing that I must mention is that why I, that's why I've got so much in, uh, admiration for Sia mm. as the Springbok captain. Mm. Okay, think everything not not just his life story which is unbelievable. But um, everything that goes with it, you know, he, he's become this worldly icon, but the way that he deals with it, you just don't see him ever, you yeah. know, not being happy or not being yeah. able to deal, however uncomfortable that situation might be, he just deals with it. And how, I do not know. Yeah. But um, yeah, he, he really is incredible in terms of that. But I, I get 100% what you're saying, yeah. you know, it's, um, it's tough sometimes, and it, it never should be like that, day. Yeah. The thing is, you actually like, you wipe the out of your eyes and two years have gone by and you're yeah. like I've just wasted two years of energy yeah I've got about hundred thousand extra gray hairs on my head and yeah. my face and it's like why, why do you why do you put yourself through that like because shrunk actually 10 centimeters yeah <laughs> shrunk yeah a little bit <laughs> and you're just like you know there's so much to this game and the enjoyment is the most important yeah. and winning with your teammates is the utmost not scoring runs and taking wickets. Winning with your yes. teammates is the utmost. Dean, best player you ever played with? There's only one. <laughs> and I only played with him for about a year, 18 months, and that was Callis. The king. <laughs> one yeah, for I the mean, king. Have a sip for the king. I mean, I, 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 one for the king. Yeah, it does. One oh, for the king, fingers. surely. <laughs> Can you drink water to the king? I think it's sacrilegious. Give us no. two fingers for the king. Jacques Callis for me was an absolute, and I think he... It changed guys' careers like A.B. de Villiers, Amla, because they had first-hand of watching how this guy operated as a three-in-one cricketer. Um, record is, like Tendulkar with a bat. The comparisons, obviously, oh, yeah. like so you can't with a, uh, and he's got 300 catches catch. in the grab, so which wonder. is the worst place to field. And he doesn't get... got small hands. Yeah. Oh, we've got big hands, it's lucky, Dean. Bro, I'll catch you quickly, man. <laughs> um, and yet he doesn't get a lot of uh, credit for what he's done. Yeah. Um, I mean, South Africans are very proud when it comes to not giving guys credit. They're like, no, actually, this guy's the best ever. <coughs> Where the rest of the world, if he was Australian, he would have yeah. his face on every, on every, on every banknote and... We, we don't credit our own people. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, you know, yeah. others do. No, no, I'm saying South say, Africans. Yeah. South Africans don't give credit for when yeah. guys are been brilliant like just say hey well done yeah. the rest ask, of the world will <laughs> if you ask any other cricketer they'll say to you Callis is the best ever did yeah because he is and it's spot on like in Australia you like if you had a career like he did in Australia you would have a statue outside of the Newlands so yeah Callis by far in my opinion just purely because of the demand that he had to do on the field yeah and single-handedly had to Falling rock against up every day he demanded a lot last night, though, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, he's become <laughs> he he's also a lot one of those off the field as well. Yeah, he's pretty good at that as well. He's very good. He's a silent assassin. He sneaks up on you and sits there and just drains your energy, but in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes talk. <laughs> they do. They the do. eyes are talking. <laughs> what about you, John? Who's, who's the best player you've ever played with on the cricket field? Skulk Berger. Um... You know that Skull got a cricket contract out of school. Also lefty, opener. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lefty, I mean, Skull dropped <laughs> dropped here today. He got a lift to Skull from a, the airport. It's a big target though. Eh? Yeah, it's it opening is. better. Yeah, yeah. But Skull, yeah, he did drop me. <clears throat> He's a bit of a bigger target than you. Yeah. Lefty and bit of seam as well. Bowler. So batted left, left-handed, bowled right-handed. Moving on. Uh, speaking of hands, Dean, 
How are your hands? Eat with both hands. My hands are brilliant. I haven't played cricket in a while. You shaved fine. your entire body at some point. For the I, show. I clipped. I clipped. You clip? Yeah. Look like a in the gully. gorilla. <laughs> sometimes you have I like don't even chum. know why I want to be with you. You have a chim everywhere. It's just like... You know, sometimes when you're sweating on your couch, and you know, it's, it's hot out there in Pretoria. But you've got to be yeah. quite cautious of fires though, don't you? Yeah, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> That's Let's. for another day. Let's. That's, that's not cricket. That's, Let's. Not, that's not cricket. Mate. Let's go there. That's not cricket chat. As a host, not as, as host I, I'm assuming Nick would want to hear the story uh, as the host. I feel like you're ganging up on your, me. I'm no, I'm prompting you. No, I want you, no want you to feel comfortable. Say no uh, to bullies. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But that's no. not how I know you. Now, there was a time where um, <laughs> <laughs> we do this bush trip once a year. Uh, we go to Skakuza and... Like they take us out into the bush, there's some nice tents, there's no signal. It's about an hour and a half away from Skakuza, from civil, civilization. And uh, yeah, one thing led to another and I fell in the fire. <laughs> yeah. But because I've got the military training, I, <laughs> I was able to like spin out of the, like the, the fire was, it's quite big. It was Did about, you roll yourself out? Off yeah, but there were fire. about 12 bags of wood in the fires. So like, obviously burnt out so it was it wasn't cold and because of my training <laughs> I, I was able to spin out and like clothing was obviously fine and nothing burnt and then I wiped my hand back like this and I was like and the skin just like peeled cold. off my ah. peeled off my hand and um, so we're an hour and a half away from a doctor right and uh, luckily the doctor in the in the village um, her husband was with us so we climbed in a game viewer and my hand was in a cooler box. Sure. Took the beers out, <laughs> hand in the cooler box. So, and we were gunning at 120 k's an hour, single dirt road, just to get to the hospital. Um, well, I say hospital, it's like a clinic. And um, get there and like, it's after a while, your hand's out of the ice and the pain starts kicking in. And it was, it was about 112 out of three, the pain level. It sure. was an absolute joke. And five um, morphine shots later, slept over at the doctor's house. Husband was there as well. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify that. But I was absolutely out of it. And my hand was burnt to s***. <laughs> we this was day one of our five-day boys trip, or six-day boys, boys trip. Was this in season? Uh, it was. It was, yeah. And, uh, and then he played a game against India and scored a century. Well, actually, Just that leads up. me to my next Four question. Four years later. <laughs> have, you, um, have you ever had to fight fire with Kohli or Ashwin? Let's, let's go there. All the time. Tell us. Tell us. Uh, oh, gosh. I guess, yeah, I can't remember. What was that Yeah, You went there. I was there. I was watching from, uh, from the bench. What, yeah, when what he, year was when, that? When he abused the... No, no, no. My first, the first Kohli encounter. Was it in India? Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't that one where we only played two-day play tests. Test cricket. Was, I mean, those wickets were a joke. It's like playing on that, right. that surface there. And um, I came into bat and I was actually like holding my own against Ashwin and... What's his name? Jadeja. 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 Yeah. And Kohli, he like spat at me. Oh, that's and nice. I said to him, uh, if you do that, I'll f*** you with this bat. <laughs> <laughs> said, yes. You, you did yeah. he understand that word? Yes, yes he did. Because the Villiers was the his Villiers. teammate at oh, RCB, yeah. so he understood. Right. And I said, if you do that, I'll, on this field, I'll absolutely knock you out. Anyway, so realized that um, the Villiers found out what he did, and he went up to him and said, Bud, why are you spitting at my teammate, bud? Like, seriously, that's not on. And two years later, playing South Africa, and he calls me aside. He said, listen, can we go have a drink at the end of the series? I want to just apologize for my actions. This is like two, three years later. And I was like, but seriously, it's... But is this not the start of the series? This is it. So we got seven weeks. We had 73 days actually. And he says, can we go have a drink at it's the end? Two years later in South Africa, we play them. Okay. And he says, he needs to apologize for what he did two, three years prior to this. So we had a drink. Punchline is we drank till three, three in the morning. This is when he used to drink. Um, I was obviously converted a bit. So yeah, long story short, that was my, my first encounter with Virat. And the punchline uh, wasn't delivered no, that well. Eh? No, no, it wasn't the punchline. But the, they're usually but pretty good at that. Oh, yeah. he's back. But at least... Thanks, like, first beer, yes, Sam. Fantastic, thank you, sir. But how sweet, let me just... How would you have liked me to have ended that, Nick? <laughs> no, I think, I mean, it, I think it's great. In. You still have another, I'm going to give you another opportunity, because... <laughs> 
Uh, how Thank sweet you. was it to then end your career playing against both of those both of those guys, right? Ashwin yeah. and and Kohli, uh, particularly at Centurion. I mean, was it beautiful? Awesome. Is that a better closing punch? <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I can do. I can yeah. do. We're going to take a short break to look at part two of Fans in the Stands. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Who do you is going to be the leader, leading wicket taker today? Uh, probably Ravada. I think the only bowler I know is Ravada, so Ravada. <laughs> very, very quick and educated there. Should I just stick this side? <laughs> but we haven't heard anyone say Sam Curran. Like, why do you think no, Sam Curran isn't a leading wicket taker? I don't like his style. Do you don't uh, like him or like the style? No, I don't like his style. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not SA, so. Fair enough. Keep it, keep it in the country. Keep it in the country. Very special guest. We've got Will Lindley. Very good singer in South Africa. Famous singer. I wouldn't be, say that. Been all over the world. Now I've watched your life, bro. You're good. <laughs> don't worry about it. All right. Uh, Will, first time at the cricket? Uh, first time this year. Yes. yes. Yeah. First time. All right. So, obviously, who are you supporting tonight? Mike Ata. Okay, cool. And if you had to bet on anyone to score the most runs today, who do you think it's going to be? You are, I might embarrass myself here. Yeah. Is Brevis with Brevis is, that's a hell of a shot. Do you have Brevis? Hasn't had the best, Brevis? Haven't had the best tournament, but he's going to score some runs tonight. So I've had over like 600 marriage proposals. Are you single? I am single. Was that an opportunity? Look, look, marriage isn't there yet, eh? But, but, but no, uh, run, no, no run, no run. No, 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 no you know we'll, strong today. Right. So we'll, we'll, we'll play a block and we'll wait. Oh, we'll wait for a couple of weeks down yeah, the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See how the pitch develops. A few more overs, a yeah, yeah, yeah. few more overs. See the how the pitch pitch is running. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win tonight, Amy? I've gone DSG. They were the favourites on Betway, so I have taken them in my favour. All right, and your highest run scorer? It's a tough one, but I'm going to go find Anderson. He's had a good game and he's had a good run. So definitely find Anderson. All right, I'm going to go with Tony DeZolzi playing his first game in today's tournament, in, in, in this year's tournament. And highest wicket taker, I'm going to go with Sam Curran. I reckon he's going to be pretty good on this wicket tonight. And what do you think, Amy? I think you've taken the words straight out of my mouth there, Chris. Sam Curran has been a favorite, so I'm going to stick with Sam Curran as well. All right, cool. Thank you, everybody. And um, yes, we'll see you on the next episode of Fans in the Stands with Betway. Let's talk about captaincy. Um, greatest captains, I've, I'm sure it's the same person that you've, you've both played under. Would you agree? Yeah, Captain Morgan. Captain Spice Morgan. Ball. Yeah, yeah. my favourite captain. Ball, yeah. What made Graham Smith the great captain that he was? What is the art of captaincy? Tell us a bit about that. Okay, I, for me, it's sure, straight away was the presence he had. Yeah. He's still got he's still got it at this moment in time, but he, the presence that he had as a, a, as a captain, he demanded respect without being arrogant or anything like that, but he was just, and he led from the front. I think he earned it though. If there was a fight, he was the first oak there. I think he earned that uh, respect from everyone. Remember, he took it over when he was mm, 21, 21, 22, something 22. like that. And he had to deal with a lot of big dogs in the side, literally, and names as well. So, And he almost had to get their respect on, on his side. So he had to do something like amazing within the team structure from a performance uh, point of view for them to actually say, listen, you know, you've got my respect. And he did that in England, where he scored those, yeah, double, those double hundreds. And... Um, <clears throat> so I mean, it's for a young guy to do that and have those guys in your in your side and then get them on your side, because that's the thing. He was most probably playing for South Africa, but the guys weren't playing for him yet. Mm. And that's like the I think that's a defining moment for a captain is the minute you get everyone on your side, yeah. um, from a respect point of view. Um, I think then you're going to win most battles, um, which he had to work his ass off, and he had a lot of fights with guys <laughs> building up to that. But then he put out performances which were still we still speak about it today like we're doing now um so i think he had, he had to go through that journey first and then get the guys respect on his side <coughs> and then with the names that he had in the change room and the in the starting 11 i mean you, you can't lose too many games with that but but like so being the captain is one thing and like you said but you know getting the team to follow you mm. yeah you know that's a totally, and that takes time. You know it, it oh, takes, yeah. it takes, um, it it takes a lot of investment into growing relationships to be able to get that. But also you need to back it up with performances. Yeah. You know if you're not scoring, if if you're the captain and you you're not playing well. Yeah. 
it's a, yeah, it's a big hole. You're under the pump. Eh? It's a big hole. Like this is a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying from from experience yeah, yeah. as well. And 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 I was there for that as well. Where yes, you, you you're struggling to justify your your place in the team. Yeah. You know, but you're the captain. Um, but what amazes me of Graham is the fact that at 22, you know, he had a he had maturity about him mm. to lead a South African team with those names, as you guys have mentioned. At 22, you know, what, what was it, 22 or 23? 22. But still, at that age, you know, and, and the maturity with which he did it and the ability to then score those runs and do all of that as well, it takes a special person. And even now in the role that he has, mm. etc. Yeah. The commissioner. Um, you know, he, he, the commissioner. The commissioner. So appropriate. You know? commission. We'll get him here and he's a totally different person. The commissioner. Okay? <laughs> yeah, you know. The uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it starts to have all these crowds. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's not and really attendance is up by 30%. <laughs> he sounds like, yeah. Sometimes when he yeah. talks, he sounds like he should work for Michael De Brolio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it, but it does take a... And, and, and John, John, Smith, John Smith's the same. Yeah. You know, yeah. he, he did the same. You know, he was pretty young when he got the job. Took the team from being ranked six in the world to winning the World Cup four years later. Yeah. Um, and to be able to do it over a long period of time, um, you know, and have success throughout that period, uh, you, you, it, yeah. it takes special special captains. And those are certainly two guys that... But the that, thing that, with that, Buffy did well, he, his performance, like, he hardly failed. Mm. Even with still running the ship, like, so I think because he had a lot of guys around him, they looked after their own game, like that door, that box was ticked. But he still had to look after his own performance. And yeah. you you won't if you think back now. When did he actually fail with the bat? Sure, he went through a phase where Zaire Khan was cleaning him up. But that's maybe the only time that you can think of that. So you still have to run the run the run the show, and look after your performance. And he did it with bloody massive credibility. Sandpaper Gate. Let's let's quickly talk about memories, fun times. What a wonderful day that was. Fine issues. It was an amazing test because I carried my bat there for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, no one talks about it, but anyways. I did. We need to uh, celebrate. Yeah, yes, celebrate it. <laughs> uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> uh, I, 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 what happened again? It was Oak with a... He yeah, yeah, yeah. brought it on in his pocket. No, he, he, he caught it. He caught it, yeah. Oh, it's in his pecker, yeah. Is it his pecker? Uh, yeah. Shame, poor thing. No, that's where he tried to hide it. Yeah. Sure. And told, the, told, 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 told the umpires it was his, was his... It was a piece of paper from his lip pass. Yeah. Yeah. And it, uh, it was a street rapper or no. something like that. My favourite line from that whole series, I mean, you obviously played and you smacked him a little bit there, was when AB was in that zone because obviously the build-up to that was Quentin de Kock saying something to David Warner about David Warner's wife. And then it kicked off in the, on the stairs in hey, Kingsmead. Yeah. Oh, Sunny Bull. The yeah. Sunny Bull issue, Sunny Bull gate. So they hit the fan when they were walking up the stairs. So that, and we got in Durban. Hard. So the only reason I know about this is because I was on the bench watching all of this. So I never got picked. So Hard. It's like a theme. So, well, it is a theme. I should actually make Murray, <laughs> should make, what, and today on Murray's bench. Um, <laughs> you get no, actually, actually, and you're sitting on... I should open a toothpick company or the splinters are going to my ass. But anyway, um, and so what had, what had happened because of that was that all it did was switch South African, the South African cricket team on properly. Yeah. And when I say that, I'm saying Abbey de Villiers got switched on on a different level. Because all I remember him saying was, Ons gaan hulle nou seer maak. And Abbey was in such, I don't know, you, you remember, Abbey was in such a zone when he was batting. He's usually quite placid, quite relaxed, yeah. does his thing. But that specific test, he was in such a zone. I mean, his second body placed. No, it was in Cape Town. We beat them in PE. Then when we got to, remember, they were talking yeah. PE. Then we got them in Cape Town. And that's we when Sandpaper. We beat them in yeah. PE. Yeah. Four days. Yeah. That's when Sandpaper got happened in Cape Town. And when it happened, Cameron Bancroft, obviously, it happened. Yeah. And AB was batting with Aiden Markram. And Aiden tells the story beautifully, but I'm going to try to tell it better. He. Batting with Aiden, and obviously Zabies was in such a zone. He was on forty odd, and he's blocked the ball. And the crowd, and the big screen had shown what had gone on with the sandpaper, and that's when the crowd got involved. Yeah, yeah. And AB didn't hear a thing. He was just so focused on f Australians up because they were yeah. abusing him, and he just walked straight at them with those eyes focused on you. And, and eventually, Aiden's walked down the wicket and he's gone, Abbas, something's gone on you. And he says, That's fine. He says, No, no, oh, something's going on you. He says, What do you mean? And when he said that, played on the big screen, showing Cameron Bank off for the ball, yeah. putting it away, and AB's gone, nice, very next ball. AB blocks a ball, Cameron Bancroft comes Oof. to comes to pick the ball up. 
And he says, no, he's looked at him and gone, hey, hey, leave that ball. Cameron, hey, hey. And he says, his sheepish little mate, I caught it and looked up at him and ab has gone, you're now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of the test match because then they hurt them. Yeah, but, I mean, you still see That's Steve, hectic, Steve guys. Eyes, eh? No, I mean, it was hectic. Glass. Uh, the next day, so after that, so obviously everything comes out. <clears throat> Australia's still waking up to the fact of what's yeah. happened. Yeah, the prime minister gets involved, and it's it just—it was—it was, it was so—it was just so. I actually felt sorry for them, really. Oh. Yeah, I did because I felt sorry for Cameron uh, because he was at the end He's of the like day he was like a scapegoat yeah. in the whole story. Um, I think they were so desperate to win that they were willing to actually get caught. Yeah, but still trying to win, um, which. Like we know, South Africans, she's like, we'll do most things to try and win. We're like that's our that's our passion, that's our culture. Their cultures are very similar, and um, but I I really felt I really felt sorry for for the players, especially what happened after that. Yeah, God, it was like because he never recovered. The other two did. Yeah, but like watching Steve Smith being escorted out of the airport with yeah. fifty cops around him. I mean, sure. you didn't you didn't rape someone, you didn't yeah. kill someone. Like, I mean, but in Australia's terms, this was like. But that was in South huge. African press, though. That was all Australian yeah, press Australia at the airport that had coming, flown coming this way. That coming this way that had brought all their cameras, cameras out. Yeah. So it wasn't our guys. No. Mori, as a bowler, mm. do you know that's going on? If you swing it, yeah, because you know, well. Well, there's ways and means of doing it. There's, there's uh, they want to call it the legal way and there's the illegal way. And I, I can honestly say in my career, I never, never ever tried to scratch a ball, bite a ball. Yeah. I never ever. I always, I was a firm believer, and if you, you you can shine a ball in the right manner. Yeah. And you can take care of the one side properly, and the other side you don't. You leave alone. You can get the ball to do it naturally. However, the Aussies were doing it within like 15 overs. Yeah. Yeah. And that's impossible to do the cricket ball. Yeah. It is impossible to do so. Yes, they, they, they are. I, I can name a few names that have pushed the limits. There's a former wicketkeeper that I will not mention who was fielding for some reason um, at Midoff. And at, and at one stage I looked at him and he had a little red piece of leather in his mouth that he had bitten off the ball. Um, <laughs> sure. So angry. It, it definitely angry. happens. It, it happens. Is that a South African guy? Yes. But it happens. Um, but you do know, you do know about it. But I was always a firm believer on you guys can do what you want. I'm not going to do it. Let's sure. go into the quick fire uh, round to end off this wonderful interview with Dean Elgar. It's been incredible. With and John Devilliers and yeah. Chris Morris. Um, and yeah, and Nick. Thanks, <laughs> Dean. Uh, best you've ever faced. Best bowler you've ever faced. Anywhere. I'm going to go local and Dale. Dale Stain. Nice. Dale Bengenstein. Who is the Some worst the worst bowler you faced in international cricket? Chris Morris. Best teammate on the Joel. It's mm. a toughie. We all said there's one oak who's got the biggest tank. Is he it knows it, he knows him as well. Simon. No. Not Simon. Same surname. Benjamin. Yes. Abram Benjamin. <laughs> oh no, 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 that's that's different. Yeah. That's I, I thought you're talking about like current or for like no, anyone. No, anyone. De Villiers, eh? No, De Villiers. Really? Yeah, De Villiers. De Villiers. Wow. Oh. We've had some goes, eh? absolute barbaric nights. Oh. What's been one of the messiest? Um, we beat Australia in PE. Yes. And yes, we St. Francis. It was it was <laughs> it was that very test. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we went out to the casino. What's it called? The board. The boardwalk. Boardwalk casino at like two o'clock in the morning. And we walked into the Privé and Andrew Simons was there. And, but he was like, the later Andrew Simons, yeah, and sure. he was like upside down and he saw us and we were chatting, chatting. And Abby and I used to play with each other, like we used to hit each other like this and like hit each other in the ribs. And Andrew Simons saw a great opportunity to give me a PK <laughs> for nothing. And he just smacked me. And I looked at him and I looked at Abby and Abby said to me, oh no, don't do this. <laughs> and I like went forward and Abby pulled me back. So yeah, the Villiers, we've got some, we've had some really good times. Andrew Simons, you f bastard. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> you <f> <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Any regrets at, the, at, the, at this, as the, as the bell tolls on your international test career. Jeez, do we put like the, wow. the, huh? the slow music yeah. on now? And we do minor regrets. keys. Do we put the hand around him? Um, Mistakes. Uh, I would have liked. I would have liked to have been a little bit more selfish. Selfish. Yeah, that's my only regret. I I wasn't selfish selfish enough. 
So you didn't do it my way. Jeffrey boycott Ronaldo is the most selfish ever yeah. test opening batsman. I'm saying a little bit more. I'm not saying totally selfish. Yeah. I'm saying a little bit more selfish. Also, like you, Gutsy refused to give his wicket away. I recently <laughs> heard from a friend, That's Jeffrey Boycott selfish. came to stay with his family in the 1960s and played garden cricket with this guy who was 12 and his brother who was six and refused to let them bat. He just batted all day. <laughs> yeah. And at what the a end, legend. <laughs> Brody said, could you give my brother Paul a turn? <laughs> he's hard. he's yeah. six. Can you give him a turn? <laughs> and Jeffrey Boycott looked at him and said, never give thy f***ing wicket away. And that's what you've done. <laughs> Uh, Dean Elgar, proudest, proudest moments of your career? Captaining at Lords and winning. Huh? Captaining oh, yeah, at so Lords. I thought you meant your captain debut. Captaining at Lords and winning. Your debut captaining at Lords, that was uh, three days. But winning was cool. I mean, that's a memory that. Mm. Yeah. You have a lot to be proud of. We're proud of you, are we? Yes, we are. of course Absolutely. we are. Absolutely. And we celebrate your achievements and accomplishments and height. Yes. Thank you. Even me. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Dean. Um, so, Dean, thank you so much uh, for joining us Thanks here for on me, Banter guys. with the boys. Yeah. Uh, it's been amazing to have you. One of our best guests on the show thus far, I would yeah, say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, easily. Eh? No, yeah. Hands down. Thanks so much. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in for this very first episode of Banter with the boys. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you'll be back and, uh, and that you're enjoying the cricket. And in the meantime, get some bets on. And we'll see you all with our next international superstar guest very soon. Very, very soon. Very. Very Around soon. Around the corner.